making this video on the Nissan Murano. This one's a 2009. That's a pretty common issue that the rear subframes rot out. The tires started basically leaning in on both sides, also causing the tire tread to kind of wear unevenly. So I just kind of want to go over with you, first of all, what I've done so far. Um, so I've got some of this already apart. So I went ahead and took off the caliper brackets, the rotors, and hung the calipers so you don't need to disconnect that took off the bottom half of the shocks. The video I watched, the guy was taking apart bearings and all kinds of stuff. You do not need to do that. Um, you'll end up pulling all this stuff off after it's on the ground. Tire off, basically all your brake assembly off. And the whole point of taking that off is basically so you can get the e-brake cable out of the back. So I didn't know how to do these. I kind of had to figure it out. There is a single bolt on the back side up in here that holds this in. And on the front side, there'll be this bracket right here that just has a pin that uh, holds that those two pieces together. Once you get the pressure off of it, that pin comes out pretty easy. So I took the bottom spring off, uh, pulled this outwards, and then was able to slide that little pin out of this here. Take the bolt off the back and slid this through the back. Now I need to just go through. And I'm going to take off all the mount points for the e-brakes and let those hang. The exhaust is going to need to come out of the way. Um, the two videos I watched, they fully removed this drive shaft. I'm not sure why you have to fully remove it. I'm just going to disconnect it here and hang it. Um, I don't see what that would hurt. And it doesn't look to me like it's going to be in the way of anything. Basically, there's going to be in four mount points that hold this whole cradle in. And these are like a stud with a nut on them. So should be pretty straightforward. The springs are going to basically just, they just rest up in here. Those that come out once we lower everything down. Once the four mount points for these are loose, this whole thing should just drop out. And that's why you're going to be leaving the rear diff with it. The CVs are going to stay behind with the axle. And again, once this is all out and on the ground, we will move all this parts over to the new to us K, K member, I guess, that holds all the stuff in the back. I'm to the point where it's going to be exhaust, drive shaft, and then these four mount points to get this to drop out. Hopefully it's come loose. I did uh, read in the comments, someone said they had one of these break off, which, oh, that wouldn't be fun. Good old rust living up in the rust belt here in Michigan. All right, I'm at the point I have the exhaust cut, drive shafts hung. Um... And I have all four of these connection points off. As you can see, there's a gap. I already started dropping this down. So the only other thing that I'm kind of noticing is back in there, there is that wire harness kind of running on a 45 degree angle coming down. So I got to go back up a couple inches and get that disconnected. But it looks like maybe just that one wire harness and we should be good to go. Using the trans jack to support it like that. Um, there's the exhaust. I just ended up cutting it. The bolts up front were rusted, so rather than fight with that, I'm just going to weld that back together when we get done here. Oh, one other thing to note is these brackets have to come out as well. That's just a plastic cover, three 10 millimeters, and this has uh, two holes that are right there, and then it connects over the top of that mount. So these brackets need to come out as well, but uh, that shouldn't be that big of a deal, but it was never noted in any of the other videos I watched, so I wanted to include that as well. Here I am underneath the vehicle. I wanted to share where that wire harness connected. So that's your passenger side spring bucket. If you follow that bracket up, you can see that connector right there. So you'll need to disconnect it just above that plastic clip. Disconnect your wire here and pull that back out of the way. Oh, uh, that's all for your ABS stuff. Well, nothing ever goes as easy as planned. Out of four of these mounts, one is deciding to not release. All the rest of them are coming off just fine. This guy's being sticky, so it's been uh, sticking a pry bar up in here trying to pry these apart. It's just not coming. That uh, is just seized, seized onto that stud. I'm starting to cut this all apart. I guess we'll take it off in pieces. I don't know what else to do. I started heating it up, but of course the flame's getting big, and I've got wires and fuel lines and everything right here so making me a little scared so we're just going to start cutting it up in pieces and take it off in chunks yeah here we are just taking chunks off at a time 
It'll get there eventually. There's the K member pulled out of the Nissan Murano. What's left? Like I said, basically have these four studs. That far one there, I'm going to have to do some work to get that sleeve off. But uh, that's out. We have it over here on the trans jack. Now it's time to transfer over all these pieces and parts. So the knuckles, springs, uh, the differential, control arms, spring buckets, uh, all that. All right, now that I got these two K members set out, I'm just going to go over what I'm pulling off and what we need to disconnect. Here's my new junkyard piece. Um, as you can see, I already pulled the sway bar off. That actually mounts on this frame here. And then the other end links actually are going to be staying behind on this upper control arm. So what I'm in the process of doing is taking... These bolts out, the spring bucket I will leave attached to the knuckle and just remove it off the frame side. Then uh, basically this center differential has got this mount point, this mount point, and another one back here that has a nut through the back side. And then this whole unit pulls this way. Um, and then the other secondary bottom com uh, connection point is right here. Um, the reason I'm disconnecting here is the junkyard unit they sent. They left these behind. So if these are not on there, you'll have to actually disconnect here. So obviously we're just trying to disconnect the least amount possible so we have less issues. Hopefully it'll align better um, this way and make it easier so we're not taking everything too, totally out of whack. There is basically these um, on the back side of this, there is like a cammed bolt. Um, so I put marks on that to try to put it back in the same position it was coming out of this K member. Um, as you can see, little white marks there. I just basically put pointing down is for that cam. So you can see how that's uh, got these dimples right here to basically allow this cam bolt to find its position for alignment. This is the other point too you got to pull off. This is where we had the rust on the other side, and that's actually missing over here. So this was already off. That's really what caused our issue, and the tire's starting to lean. got so bad that they popped one of the tires. Unfortunately, this uh, is going to need new bushings. The junkyard seemed to have the same problem that I did with getting one of the bushings off the studs. Yeah, in the process is basically swapping over all the parts onto this new frame. Um... All the electrical, of course the junk here just does the fastest thing possible, so they cut all this off to get all that off and out of the way. Yeah, pulling all this wiring off of this side too, leaving it behind with the knuckles, so we don't have to disturb. Um, I have bad luck with these coming out and actually breaking those, so hopefully we can avoid that. Yeah, all right, here we are with the new K member over the top of the diff and the knuckles and all the pieces we pulled off. Got all the bolts back in, I just got to run the ABS lines, set the springs in, and then we're going to slide this up underneath the car and lower the car onto this. Uh, put the nuts on these four mounts. Here is my new mount I had to put in. This is what my delay was. I had to wait three days for this to come in the mail. Getting ready to go back in. What is the shiny snot looking all over the new parts? This is fluid film. Uh, I use this. Well, basically, it's a rust inhibitor. keeps the rust at bay. So hopefully it's going to make this last a lot longer than the last one did. I also, while everything was out, sprayed all up in here on the body. Again, trying to keep the rust away. And getting up to there later on is going to be hard to do, so might as well do it while everything's pulled out. Alright, everything is back in place. Um, so what I have left to do is to hook up these e-brake lines. Uh, get the exhaust put back in place, hook up the rear drive shaft, and put the brakes uh, back in place. So pads, rotors, just basically brakes. Um, but everything else is already pre-installed on this one. It slid back up into place. All four of my mounts lined up just good. I just use a jack and a couple roller dollies to get it up there. Time to button her up. All right, here we are. Shocks back in, springs, brakes, everything back together. It's just time for tires. Uh, exhaust is even in there. 
And again, I just chose to cut my pipe there and I just welded it back together. Um, E-brakes are back hooked up. Yeah, everything's looking good. This is in way better condition than the old one. Let's hope she gets uh, enough to get over 200,000 miles on this car. It's got uh, 150 currently.